appreciate that. Best of luck. Well, the summer and the championship is now in full swing, and this evening it's all about booking a golden ticket to the Munster football final. Only one of these teams will be still standing when the dust settles a little later. So let's take a check on the teams to the champions first, and David Power sends out 10 of the team that started last year's historic Munster final win. The defence is almost completely intact with experienced wing-backs Bill Maher and Robbie Kiley, both returning for their first starts of the year. The Kennedy brothers from Clonmel, Jack and Connell make up a brand new midfield partnership with dual star Connor Bow making his championship debut at number 11. Tip's full forward line is packed with proven performers, with all-star winners Connor Sweeney and Michael Quinlevin, two expert marksmen. Peter Keane makes two changes to the Kerry team that beat Clare a fortnight ago. Goalkeeper Shane Ryan returns from injury after missing the entire league and reclaims the number one jersey. The defence is untouched, leaving Jason Foley and Gavin Crowley to man the central positions. Up front, Michal Burns from Dr Crooks has been given a start and wears 14, but is expected to operate deeper, while David Clifford captains Kerry and lines up in his usual corner with his brother Pawdy picked at top of the left. Well, it's a lovely, bright, warm summer's evening here in Thurless. Tom Semple's field is in terrific condition and the stage set for the second of today's Monster Football semi-finals. Cork, well, they're already safely through, beat Limerick earlier on in the day. And here at Semple, a crowd of 3,500 people giving a nice splash of colour and a soundtrack of noise to add to the occasion. Conditions perfect and everybody hoping to get a game worthy of the occasion. Well, at the moment, both teams going through their warm-up routines. Paul, earlier you were down on the field a little earlier. You watched those warm-up routines very closely. And I know you were st struck by how relaxed Tipperary were in particular. Absolutely. Well, first thing I have to say is that the condition of the pitch is just spectacular. I don't think I've ever seen it looking as well. And, uh, and it's a beautiful evening for playing football. But yeah, Tipperary look very relaxed. They know they're the reigning monster champions. You know, I think they, their challenge today will be to, uh, to play, it, obviously, to the level that they're capable of playing, but also to make sure that Kerry earn every score uh, that they're going to get um, and, and work exceptionally hard, particularly early on, and not let them get a, a, get a lead. Um, Clare did very well against Kerry for long periods of the game but shot themselves in the foot in the previous game by giving away the unforced errors around the half-back line midfield which contributed to Kerry's score. So for Tipperary to stay in the game they'll have to be very efficient coming out of defence with the ball, win midfield and not make any mistakes, not give any easy balls to, uh, to, to, to the Kerry forwards. Well, Tip's only win so far this year was against Wicklow here back in May. It's been a difficult season for them so far. They come in as underdogs with nothing to lose as we pause for our own Nevian. Well, there's our match referee, Niall Cullen from the Earn Gales Club in County Fermanagh. It's his first championship fixture for some two years. His linesmen, Connor Lane and David Murnane, both from County Cork. Well, Tipperary may be the defending monster champions, but as their manager, David Power, said a little earlier, nobody outside of their camp expects them to pull off another ambush here. Kerry raging hot favourites to advance to yet another monster final and to make amends in many ways for last year's semi-final defeat to Cork. 
no doubt a good start really will be half the battle here for Tipperary Kerry have won the toss they will play down away to our left and the Kalina end in the opening half and away we go the second of the monster semi-finals is off and running early free for Kerry they made a flying start against Clare a couple of weeks ago raced into a five-point lead after only eight minutes and it's been a feature of so many of their performances this season they tend to hit the ground running establish their superiority and drive on and dictate from there one of the many reasons why they're unbeaten at this stage of the season yeah, and i think uh, tipperary immediately going into a double sweeper system two players dropping back uh, into the center trying to make it very difficult for curry to uh, to create the space that they thrive on in front of goal early knock there for gavin white the Kerry wing back but back to his feet fairly quickly as Kerry play possession football and work their way back and forth across the manicured surface here at Semple Stadium so many people saying over the last couple of weeks they've never seen it look better so no excuse for Kerry and Tip Jeremy O'Connor there broke the line but just spilled the ball gathered by Brian Fox and this is the way Tip will want to play, on the break at pace. Ball spun out wide by Connell Kennedy into the hands of Quinlevin, one of the danger men. Connor Sweeney just on a slightly different wavelength there. That attack breaks down and Kerry back in possession. Yeah, just very interesting there as uh, Jim the Connor lost the ball. It was Brian Fox, he's one of his line out number 15, but he's playing as one of the double sweepers. He swept up, I suppose, the crumbs. Uh, from the from the um, dispossession when, when, when Jeremy O'Connor lost the ball and he was the man who set up the attack. Opportunity for for uh, Tipperary just missed. A bit of a skill error from Michael Quinlevin. They'll have to take every opportunity that comes their way. Just to update you on a couple of the key matchups, David Power has sent Jimmy Feehan with Sean O'Shea, and it is Shane O'Connell who's picking up David Clifford in the early stages as Tip concede a free just right on the 45 and this perhaps a chance for Sean O'Shea and Kerry to open their account it was a, a double hit on David Moran the foul committed by Kevin Fahey yeah just looking up the field as said Tipperary going very defensive just leaving Michael Quinlevin and Connor Sweeney inside their half of the field they're two quick ball winners so they're hoping to counter attack at pace so Sean O'Shea breeze behind him, swings it over beautifully. Turns 23 next weekend, the former young footballer of the year. Had the distinction of hitting the first four points against Clare the last day, and he's opened his account here early again. Yeah, he's in fantastic form at the moment. Um, and uh, looking forward to see if he employs the same tactics as he did the last day. He was switching from centre-half forward to full forward. That dynamic movement of the Kerry forward line, it's uh, very difficult for defenders to mark that. First Tipperary restart ends up in Kerry hands. Michal Burns here gets a touch. Starting today in the place of the injured Dara Moynihan, two very similar players, they fill similar roles for Peter Keane. O'Shea takes that shot on outside his range and a chance for Tipperary to build from the back. Here's Robbie Kiley. His first run out in 2021. He's missed a lot of football through injury, but reinstated along with ba Bill Maher to the tip half back line this evening. And Robbie Kiley as well, Mike, is the, is the other uh, sweeper. And uh, again, he carries the ball well when he's going forward. But when he does go forward, Tipperary are going to have to retain possession because if they do lose it, then obviously the space in behind that, uh, that's left. Well, as we saw last season, as Tip went all the way to the All-Ireland semi-final, they like to play a heads-up football. Positive when they're in possession, but right now they're being made to work for every yard by Kerry, who are now in their defensive shape. Emmett Maloney down the line for the All-Star nominee, Kevin Fahey. Plays his club football with Clonmel Commercials. To his club mate, Jack Kennedy, one of three brothers in the Tip squad. And now Bill Maher, who shovels it into the centre to Kylie again. Bruno Beglia trying to hold up Quinlevin. Tipperary having to be particularly patient here. 
this their first championship outing they have just come through a tough division three league campaign that saw them relegated so this is a big step up for the monster champions again they work the shooting chance but it's fired away and wide by Bill Maher. That was uh, textbook defending by Kerry. Textbook defending, but good movement by uh, the tip forwards, particularly Conor Kennedy getting into a very good position inside and did the right thing. Looped around, laid the pass off, but uh, just a little bit inaccurate. Shane Ryan back in the Kerry goal, gets them moving down the field again. Tom O'Sullivan here, the corner back. Makes a few hard yards, pops it inside. Chasing in after it is Pawdy Clifford, but cut out by Evan Comerford, who read the Kerry intentions. And here's one of the sweepers Paul mentioned, Brian Fox. So much experience. Made his debut 12 years ago for Tip. The Kennedy brothers combine, Connell to Jack and away to the far side to Porrick Lurum. Kerry all sitting in position. They've now dropped a sweeper, Gavin Crowley sitting just in front of Connor Sweeney. Jack Kennedy hands it over to Connor Bow. His first championship start tonight. Robbie Kiley coming to try and break the line, back to Bow again. Tip finding it difficult to breach that Kerry rear guard. The hit from O'Connor on Connell Kennedy. Ball pops into the air, and O'Brien is there to win it. Fouled Kerry free. Yeah, terrific shoulder there by uh, Jeremy O'Connor. Working very hard. Uh, to very doing well getting the ball, moving the ball inside the 45 meter line, but really reliant on kind of one off runners. In comparison, when Kerry are moving the ball forward. Four and five of the forwards making runs, trying to create space. So an early yellow card here for Emmett Maloney. There's why high around the uh, shoulder of Stephen O'Brien. Came on during the course of last year's Monster final win, did uh, Emmett Maloney. Meanwhile, Connell Kennedy is receiving attention. Just 21 years of age, son of the former All-Ireland hurling medal winner, John Kennedy. So game restarts, free to carry, taken by Shane Ryan, and Tom O'Sullivan will carry it forward again. Tip, keeping Kerry wide and making it hard for them to gain any momentum. Quick exchange of hand passes between O'Sullivan and Moran, and now they're in. Sean O'Shea, Clifford trying to toe poke it towards goal, and in the end, free out. Tip, hold the line, and the free taken by Colm O'Shaughnessy. Yeah, and uh, Curry working it through the hands uh, very effectively at pace, but uh, just outnumbered in front of goal, and said, so far the double sweeper is working for Tip, they'll be very happy. And at the eight and a half minutes into the game and they're only a point behind that, that will have been probably target number one stay in the game for the first quarter if they can uh, deny carry any goal scoring opportunities and, uh, so far so good now space on this near side for Porik Lurum to work with run ahead made by Fahey releases it quickly to Maloney and now Tip are inside the Kerry 20 meter line Here's Kevin Fahey again, creeping forward at every opportunity from centre-back. Man coming up in support is Bill Maher, clips it through to the edge of the D. Sliding in to win it there was Lorem, breaks towards Maher who continued his run. Turns, twists, well he got the shot away but the referee had blown the whistle for the free in. He was playing an advantage and that was all down to Bill Maher. Fantastic endeavour. Well, it was a great win by Conor Sweeney in the first instance, really down really low, but this was a great win by, uh, by Bill Maher, and he's uh, sauntered up the field on a couple of occasions. Had the shot with his left foot that went narrowly wide uh, a few moments ago, so good attack by Tip, and uh, they're working very, very hard. The structure is working. I think they will have looked at Clare in the first 20 minutes of the game in, uh, in Killarney, where Clare again denied Kerry 
any goal scoring opportunities the only goal in the first half they gave away was through the unforced error so uh tip very happy so far Kerry, I think, just trying to work everything through the middle when they're going forward. Uh, playing a little bit into Tipperary's hands at the moment. Might need to stretch it wide a bit more. So Connor Sweeney, the tip captain, has the distinction of clipping over the equaliser. At this stage in the quarterfinal, Kerry were five points up and cruising. Very different sort of game so far. And as you can see, most of the match so far being played in that middle third. So all square... We're in the 11th minute here at Semple Stadium. And the Munster champions, Tipperary, giving as good as they're getting. Paddy Clifford, the playmaker, off to O'Sullivan. Tries to spin it into the corner, but... <laughs> miscued. Michal Burns was never going to get there, or uh, Paul Ganey either. Yeah, well, we saw there Paddy Clifford just looping around. He did that very effectively against Clare, looping around into that position, maybe between the 45 and uh, the halfway line, and looking for that kick pass that Peter Canavan showed in the, in the clips before the game, that kick pass into the full forward line. But again, the, the extra two temporary players are cutting that option off. Another purposeful run out of defence, that time by O'Shaughnessy. Kevin Fahey gets a nudge from Gavin White, and that's enough to knock him out over the line. Timed it beautifully, waited for the perfect moment, and bang. So Kerry back in possession, Gavin Crowley. Over to Mike Breen, man who made his debut against Clare. Kerry players getting ahead of the ball, Tipperary men backpedaling into position. As Mike Breen pops it infield to Tom O'Sullivan. Just two tip men. Inside the Kerry half right now. Paddy Clifford again, given the responsibility of trying to break the line, and he's won a free. Considering it's just his second championship start, he really is uh, handling so much ball and has been put in a position where he dictates so much of the play. Well, I think his pace and his skills and his ability to weave that evasion skill won him that free there. And, uh, you know, the, the, the challenge for Tipperary is that Kerry will continue to make those runs and they're very skillful, fast players. And uh, the concentration levels in defence will have to be very, very high. And uh, I think uh, they've given away two frees now in that position, you know, with one-off runners kind of taking on their defenders and getting fouled. So Sean O'Shea kicks Kerry back in front. Very... Finally balanced first 13 minutes here. Evan Comerford gives the signal. And the goalkeeper from Kilsheelan Kilcash delivers out towards Connell Kennedy. Fair bit of traffic and uh, movement under the dropping ball. Falls on the tip side. Jack Kennedy into the brother. Foul committed by Paul Ganey. Free taken out to Brian Fox. Quinlevin is the target, the moving target. There's that distinctive pick and go of his. Back to Bill Maher and now into the spearhead of the attack, Connor Sweeney. He's got uh, Jason Foley for company. Just delayed the pass. Now Bill Maher. Sweeney again. And a nice ball to stretch the Kerry back line out to the far side. Connor Bow makes an angle and leaves it short. Well, forwards on both sides so far having to work hard for anything they get, particularly when it comes to a shooting chance. Kerry move it slickly out of defence, and now they're on the front foot. Gavin White, referee is playing an advantage. White still going, taking full advantage of it, pops it off, here's Clifford! And the man with the golden boot strikes again. Uh, what a run by Gavin White. Just meandered his way through the uh, tip defence, uh, the advantage rule played. Worked for him on that occasion, but look at this movement. The only question mark was a fantastic finish. The only question mark, was it a fist or was it a, an overhead hand pass that came in? Uh, which you're not allowed to do. The hand pass has got to be underhand, but uh, 
What a finish. Roof of the net. Once uh, David Clifford got it, there was, it was only going to one position. But again, it was uh, that ability of a Kerry player at pace to take on uh, the defence that opened up that opportunity. David Clifford's eighth goal of the season propels Kerry into the clear and they've just topped up their advantage. Paul Ganey. He was the last man in the line and in the blink of an eye, Kerry race into a five-point lead and they've hit 1-2 without reply. Yeah, and that's what uh, great teams can do, you know, when they get, uh, get a good break, get a good score. We've seen Dublin do that over the years. In a two or three, five, four or five minute spell, they can just score very heavily. And uh, Tiberi now need to win the next uh, win the next kick out and get the next score. Just in terms of David Clifford's numbers, that's his sixth goal in championship football. His 14th for Kerry. And they just keep coming. Yeah, it's All he needs is one chance. One chance, absolutely. But it's interesting when you look at the, the top possession winners, it's uh, Tom O'Sullivan's two defenders, Thomas Sullivan for uh, Gary Bilmar, uh, for uh, Tipperary, just uh, reflective of the fact that both defences up to a couple of minutes ago were, were largely on top. Free into Kerry now, the pressure beginning to intensify on the tip back line. That was Bill Maher that caught Paddy Clifford as he tried to step by him. He's got a, a wicked sidestep, and he's not afraid to use it. And Maher there was just wrong-footed. And a slap on the jaw for Clifford, and a yellow for Maher. Yeah, well, it's, it's fantastic to see those kind of evasion skills from Paddy Clifford. Now, there, there are different ways, obviously, to break the, uh, the mass defence, and that's one of them, to be able to take on a particular player and to use your sidestep or your spin or whatever it is, dummy solo to get by a player and, and, and Kerry had been doing that the last five minutes with great success. Well, he had uh, 30 possessions against Clare the last day. Paddy Clifford and gets on so much ball as Shawnee O'Shea knocks over his third point and the whistle goes for the water break to break up this first half. Kerry leading by 1-4 to a point. Let's head to the studio and hear from Kieran and Jim. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, look, Kerry were very sloppy, I suppose, in the opening seven or eight minutes. Uh, was 1-1 one, one after 10 minutes, Kerry had five turnovers. It's probably maybe taken a bit by surprise by David Power sitting Brian Fox um, right there in the middle of it. Um, I think Kerry have, are starting to figure it out that they're going to have to get their, their speed merchants. I think Dermot O'Connor tried it once, Potty tried it there, Gavin White tried it for the goal. Um, maybe even Tom Sullivan would be another man at, at that, but... You know, lovely break by White, and that's just top class from David Clifford into the top corner. Yeah, no, absolutely, Kieran. Um, you know, Tipperary are asking a different question of Kerry. That's the bottom line. You know, they're 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 saying we're not going to let you play through us. We're going to force you to think your way through us. And Kerry now are starting to do that. They're starting to to work it out, as you say, and uh, and pick them off. Uh, Paddy Clifford as well. I think is going to be very important. Low centre of gravity, very good agility, and he's very very direct. And those incisions are very important for uh, against a system like this. Yeah, and, and I suppose up the other end of the pitch, we're, we're, we're standing here from our vantage point. You know, Conor Sweeney's hugging one sideline. Um, Michael Quinlevin's hugging the other sideline. Uh, and I think what they're doing is trying to create that space in, in the middle of the D. But they look like they don't have the speed or the injection to cut through the 45 to maybe open that up. So maybe having to look at that as well. Uh, Conor Sweeney's an all-star last year. And, you know, he'll have to get on more ball. He got one possession there. But again, Jason Foley, who's been doing well at fullback over the last number of games, um, is really, really tight in them. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Kieran. Well, he's had the ball in his hands once in the game so far, David Clifford. And he duly buried it in the back of the Tipperary net. One possession, one goal. That's what you call economic and efficient. But, Paul, it was a terrific goal, as good as we've seen in quite a while. But... Uh, you're firmly of the belief it should have been a free out. The hand pass from Gavin White coming up here, you feel, was not uh, a legal one. Well, two things here. One is the advantage rule really worked on this occasion, but the hand pass is very clear. It has to be on an underhand striking action, and that one, it was overhand. Now, Kieran Donaghy and Judio will remember against Down, I think, a number of years ago, where uh, uh, Kerry were beaten by Down in the Ireland quarter final. Uh, they were penalised for a, 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 a kind of a side hand pass or an overhand hand pass in that game. So maybe things are balancing them out. They got a goal in that game at a vital stage and it was, uh, it was turned, uh, turned over by the referee. But uh, it was a fantastic goal, but, you know, technically it has to be an underhand pass and it wasn't. 
Well, it's certainly one for Kieran, Jim and Peter to take a, another look at a little later. Back in the game, we've restarted. And again, the tip back line have been called into action. Shane O'Connell, man who didn't commit to uh, tip last year, was on the ball there briefly. But uh, I think Tip are going to avail of this stoppage to make a change. Number 22, Jason Lonergan, is out there, and he's certainly come in. And the man who's making his way off here is, I think it's going to be, Emmett Maloney. Seems to be a little bit of confusion in the Tip ranks, but uh, that's been confirmed now. It is Jason Lonergan who's on one of the All-Ireland minor winners of 2011. He's got a fair bit of senior championship experience as well. And he slots into the half-forward line with the Munster champions now six points down and with a job of work in their hands as Robbie Kiley comes striding out of the tip defence. Here's Colm O'Shaughnessy. No doubt Tipperary's confidence rattled by that Clifford goal and the couple of points either side of it. Jason Lonergan trying to use his pace. He's got Burns after him, another speed merchant. Lonergan plays a quick one two. Kerry now have got the barricades manned all the way across inside their 45 and in front of the D. Ball work to a tip shooter. It's Kevin Fahey, and that's a brilliant score. Well, they waited, they waited, and then they struck. And they were patient, and the decision-making was really good, and in the end, the pass came to the player right in the middle in front of the goal, and uh, he took the opportunity. There were plenty of carry defenders back. He had to kick, and a great score. Tips, first score for 10 minutes. Also their first score from play. Scoreboard moving again for them. Shawnee O'Shea takes the ball in his stride and takes Fox on the outside. Paul Ganey, quick change of direction. Runs right at the heart of the tip cover. Little disguised hand pass there to bring David Clifford into the game. Clumsy challenge and another free in. Yeah, just that little push as uh, David Clifford got the ball. But uh, just watch the movement here. Just the, the dummy bounce, trying to go around a player. You know, just uh, draws the tackle, draws the foul. And, uh, you know, as, as Kieran said there at the break, Kerry have kind of worked it out now that if they... Continue to make runs, little lateral runs, angled runs, take players on one on one. Uh, they'll, uh, they'll get some frees. Sean O'Shea up to four points now. All from freeze. And that is target practice for him, really. Lead out to six. This carries second game here at Semple Stadium this season. We're also here during the Allianz League to play out that thrilling draw against Dublin. David Power saying during the week, Tipperary absolutely love playing here. They've got a good record here. But so far, the defending champions finding the going a little tough. Quinlevin just glides away from the defender, pops it out to the midfield support runner. And that was really well worked and really well taken. Jack Kennedy with his first score. That's a very good score. Really good play by Quinlevin. Took the right option again. Jack Kennedy. Col Kennedy doing very well in the middle of the field, making runs forward. Terrific score. They're well able to shoot uh, Tipperary from around that 45-meter line if they get it to, the, to the, uh, the, the accurate players. And they have quite a number of them on the team. A flurry of hand passes. And Kerry are inside enemy territory. Clifford. Getting on more ball now in this second quarter. Kerry changed the angle of attack. Jermall O'Connor to Michal Burns. Wouldn't be a, a noted scorer. And that's away to the right. Few that's people. Uh, Kerry's first wide, and it comes in the 23rd minute. Yeah, a few people calling for Hawkeye. Um, I think Kerry, a couple of the Kerry supporters uh, thought that might have been over the bar. But uh, again, really good movement, just uh, slightly misdirected. But uh, just the skill level of the carry forwards and the movement is very, very impressive. Just the two wides in the game so far, one for either team. As Paddy Clifford just sits in under the break, 
And again, his first instinct is to head towards the opposition goal. Here's his brother David, pops it out to Pawdy. Stumbling but held his balance, looking to thread it across. Ganey had made a run at the back post, but it was well cut out initially. Ball lost by Porrick Lorem. David Clifford on the scene very quickly. Sean O'Shea, lovely swivel to lose a few defenders. And the shot is high from Tom O'Sullivan. And over the bar. Well, Kerry worked that beautifully. And I think all the credit will go to Paul Ganey. I think the Kerry players will recognise his role in that. Tiberi had won the ball in defence and Paul Rennie uh, forced a turnover. And uh, from there then, three, four passes later, it was uh, hooked over the bar by Tom, Tom O'Sullivan, who still carries leading possession winner because uh, he's playing most of his football in, uh, inside the, uh, the Tipperary half. That uh, Kerry defeat to Cork in last year's Munster semi-final. First time they'd lost a game in the province for eight years. Very much a, a blip in terms of their overall record in the Munster Championship and they're starting to play here now with the swagger and the confidence of old again Burns all the way back to Gavin Crowley the centre back from Temple No tip with 14 men between the ball and their own goal as Jermyn O'Connor feeds it through to Pody Clifford chasing after him is Lonergan Bill Maher comes across as well. Ball popped through to Burns. Uses his pace to get himself out of that tight corner. Stephen O'Brien. Men queuing up for it on the right-hand side. One of them is David Moran. Nobody picking up Tom O'Sullivan, who just drifted into space. And a handy score. Two in a row for Tom O'Sullivan. Well, fantastic piece of play again. And just uh, Tipperary really struggling with the pace of the Kerry team carry forwards their conditioning is so good we've mentioned that over the last couple of games the movement they continue to to run at at high pace and again tom o'sullivan dropping up because he's not marking anybody uh with uh, brian fox playing as that uh, one of those two sweepers tom o'sullivan has uh, plenty of space evan comerford looking for quinn levin tries to flick it on there was a push on the uh, tip man as he jumped for that ball. Niall Cullen gives the free to the home side and a chance for them perhaps to engineer a move here. But right now they've got uh, just one man inside the Kerry 45. It's a critical period for tip. Obviously all the narrative during the week is about how much would Kerry win this game by and uh, now that they've got a decent lead, you know, tip have got to maintain their work rate, keep believing and uh, create opportunities. Robbie Kiley fires it out to Jack Kennedy who breaks the line. Kennedy, he's gone down, pushed over, penalty. Well, Jack Kennedy there came thundering through and down he went. Yeah, look at uh, right on right on the line, I think. Maybe slightly, slightly outside perhaps. Um, He's not giving it as a cynical foul because not, it's not one of the cynical fouls. It wasn't a deliberate pull down, uh, but it was probably just slightly outside. But I think a momentum brought him in. Uh, but he's uh, he's making those runs deep. The two brothers, actually, Jack and Connor, are making those runs deep and causing some problems. So Connor Sweeney, the Tipperary captain, steps up. This is a watershed moment. He's already scored one goal from a penalty this season in the Allianz League. And he's facing the Kerry goalkeeper, Shane Ryan. 27 minutes into the Munster semi-final. Here's Tip's chance to throw themselves a lifeline. And Connor Sweeney tucks it away. Game on. Hugh, Kerry's Hugh, lead back to four. Hugh, huge lift. Absolutely huge lift uh, to Tipperary. And uh, if I was critical about maybe a decision about the previous penalty, again, you could also be slightly critical because I think they, the uh, foul was just outside. Uh, but again, it's one of these anomalies in the system. If it was a cynical foul, the referee had every right to give the penalty. Uh, it wasn't a cynical foul, so that's why there was no black card given in this occasion. But uh, gets them right back in the game. Well, it was a beautifully taken penalty by Conor Sweeney. As you can see, 
Niall Cullen's attention is being brought to something that's happened right down at the other end of the field. His umpires have been in communication. That's uh, Connor Bow in a tangle with Gavin Crowley. Meanwhile, referee wants to speak to Shane O'Connell and uh, David Clifford. Well, all of a sudden, after a slow burning first half, it's starting to feel much more like a monster semi-final. Yellows all round, one for O'Connell, one for Clifford. Well, absolutely, yeah, but it's really important. It was really important for Tip to get that goal. It just creates a great contest again, you know, coming into the last seven or eight minutes of the first half. And it's lift to the crowd, three, little over 3,000 people here. And uh, everyone enjoying, I'm sure, enjoying the game, enjoying the opportunity to see a game live, which is fantastic. But, uh, you know, Tip are certainly back in the game now, and that will give them a huge lift. I think fair to say the, uh, the game needed that goal. Connor Sweeney. Cool as you like. Sending uh, Shane Ryan the wrong way. And now we await Kerry's response. David Moran claims the kick out. Mike Breen releases Sean O'Shea, and they're on the move again. David Clifford, faced by Shane O'Connell, who's now on a yellow card, one of three tip men. Sean O'Shea fists it high and over the bar. Well, when they're in full flight and working in tandem, Clifford and O'Shea, a joy to watch. Yeah, and again, referee did well there, gave the advantage, had the hand up. Sean O'Shea made a great run, and yeah, even looking at uh, Kerry in the warm-up, they play these intricate games where lots of players are involved, giving passes in near the goal, under pressure, and uh, always looking for the, the better place player and the runner coming through. And David Clifford, uh, super pass, super run by, uh, by Sean O'Shea. That was uh, Sean O'Shea's first score from play this evening. Leaves Kerry sitting on a five point cushion. Brino Begula timed his jump there to perfection. Just to knock it away from. Quinlevin. Moran takes the hit and burns, heads away with the ball. Tom O'Sullivan. The free man, as it were, when Kerry head into attack. Sean O'Shea. Plenty of options, good hit. Delivered by Shane O'Connell. Paddy Clifford drives right through four defenders. Leaves it short, and Comerford will come out and play a fly goalie for a moment. Doesn't head too far, though, from home. Mike the, Mike, the interesting thing there was Mike Breen took a hit as he was uh, went in for the pass there. It didn't knock a stir out of him. The, all of the players are very well conditioned, but Kerry looked particularly um, maybe a step up from where they were the last couple of years in terms of conditioning. A fast break on here for Tip. Connell Kennedy weaves his way around more. Outside to his left is Porik Lurum. Cuts inside, makes an angle. And that's well away from goal. Too long for Connor Sweeney. And out for Tip's second wide of the game. Yeah, you'd think that t Tip might uh, might have a look at maybe just altering their tactics occasionally. They have Connor Sweeney in there and a one-on-one -on -one inside. If they just can get the odd long ball into him, Michael Quinlan, the same thing. Just occasionally, just change the tactics. Um, like they did against Mayo last year in the first 10 minutes where they caused a lot of damage or they caused a lot of problems for Mayo. They didn't convert it into, into goals in that All-Ireland semi-final, but uh, both Quinlevin and Connor Sweeney well able to win a long ball on, on their own. So we're heading towards the last three minutes of normal time at the end of this first half, and Kerry are making their way towards the tip goal again. It's O'Brien, and he's been held up and fouled. And it's been a, a recurring theme at times in this uh, first half when Kerry run at the tip back line. They are coughing up freeze. Well, they're, they're lightning quick and have a very high skill level. So it's very, very difficult for defenders. And uh, I suppose there's an element of trust in it as well. If a defender lets a player go by, is he confident that the double sweeper will, will be able to block the, uh, the goal scoring opportunity? That's now a goal and 13 points for Sean O'Shea in this year's Monster Championship. Six this evening. 
and he is hurting Tipperary every time he gets the ball in his hands, whether it's uh, setting up a score or a, an attack or when it comes to freeze, he has been unerring. Double scores now in the semi-final as Emmon Comerford scans the horizon. Well taken, but there was a push in the back. Connor Bow trying to gain an unfair advantage there, according to the referee. He's a young man who, a couple of years ago, won an All-Ireland Under-20 hurling medal, Connor Bow. Getting his big chance tonight for the county footballers. Tom O'Sullivan once more is the man with that decision to make. Picks out the pass to Paddy Clifford. Times his run to perfection. Back outside to O'Sullivan who continued the run. But he just got underneath that and he scoops it uh, away and wide. That's Kerry's second. But his possession count climbing steadily, and he really is dictating affairs every time Kerry come forward. Well, he's, he's finding himself in those positions. He's drifting in from the right wing. He's, you know, he's a, a spare player, a free player, if you like, so he can drift into the centre. He's had three shots for scores, got two. But what I like is <coughs> Potty Clifford's movement has been uh, fantastic. And, th and, th and that last play there wasn't much space inside, but he sprinted into the centre to find a little pocket of space and win the, win the pass. And uh, here he is on the ball again. Again, the tip restart doesn't hit its target. Sean O'Shea breaks through and whips it up and over the bar. Well, Gavin Crowley started that move with a lovely touchdown to White. And then Kerry's green and gold wave just swept in on the tip goal yeah and again potty clifford involved and lovely pass inside just doing the simple things giving to the giving the pass to the runner in a better position and uh, sean o'shea's momentum little swivel past the player and kicks the point so you know it's uh, it's lovely to watch i have to say their movement is fantastic their skill level is very high as i've said before and uh, it's very very difficult for a defense to cope with that well, Sean O'Shea from Kinmare now is really starting to get into his rhythm. He's hit the last three points of the match, two from play. And he's starting to find more time and more space. Sweeney, nice little layoff to Quinlevin. The dynamic duo in that tip full forward line combining. Back to Bill Maher. Recycled to Robbie Kiley, who's now playing his club football with Bally Rowe in Cork. Nothing on short, drops it in long. Odo Begliuk did well there just to shadow Quinlevin and usher that ball out over the line. Frustrated look on Robbie Kiley's face. We're into additional time at the end of the first half. Kerry's lead out to seven. Yeah, and the way they're playing is very taxing on, uh, on uh, the temporary defence. I think Robbie Kiley there was uh, having to go for a score, but just uh, screwed off the, the boot. And I think uh, in terms of conserving some energy in the second half, Tipperary will have to go, as I said a few minutes ago, will have to go along on a few occasions just to hope that they might win a ball inside and have a couple of runners supporting uh, Connor Sweeney and Michael Quindivan. Because uh, it's a very, very warm evening here and they're certainly doing a lot of chasing at the moment. Another foul, another free. Three tip players, by the way, on yellow cards so far in the game and they're free count, the free count against them starting to climb, O'Shea goes short and quick, Jeremy O'Connor off the left bends it in and hits the target hasn't got to, too many chances to get within sight of goal so far Jeremy O'Connor, but he makes that one count yeah, but his athleticism and decision making was fantastic on that occasion, he won the pass he gave the pass and he sprinted 10 metres into space to get the return pass and uh, just left three temporary players in his wake just that give and go, pass the ball, move into space for a turn pass or to create an opportunity for somebody else. Well, there goes the half-time whistle. Kerry's response since the penalty goal from Connor Sweeney has been emphatic. Four points without reply. And right now, the Munster champions, Tipperary, find themselves with their backs to the wall less than eight months on from their finest hour. At half-time here at Semple Stadium, it's Kerry 111, Tipperary 13.
look, it's it, it's a huge factor. They'll definitely have to have addressed that at half time. It'll be a big bearing and it's Kerry coming out now. Um, it'll be interesting to see what kind of who they bring in, how they freshen it up in the Kerry attack because if they did that brilliantly against Clare two weeks ago. OK, well, Kerry, you're back on the pitch. Then it's time for us to go back to our commentary team of Mike Finnerty and Paul Early. Thanks, Gronia. Welcome back. Just the one change from what we can see during the break. Uh, David Power is bringing in Paddy Feehan from Killin' All, brother of uh, the fullback Jimmy, and it's Porrick Lorem who is being taken out. Kerry looked to be lining out as they left the field at the end of the first half. No changes. Just uh, a few numbers to update you on. Thomas Sullivan, 20 possessions in the first half, more than anybody else on the field. Bill Maher handled more ball for tip than anybody else. 14 possessions for him. And uh, another standout stat, none of the Tipperary forward line has yet scored from play in this game. As our referee Niall Cullen gets the second half underway, Cork waiting in the wings to play the winners in the Monster Final in a fortnight's time. If it's Kerry, it will be at Fitzgerald Stadium in Killarney. If it's tip again, well then it will be back here in Furless. And they've made a very positive start to the second half. That's Paddy Feehan getting involved right from the, the off here, and he's won a free in. Yeah, that's the first uh, throw in that Kerry have lost in this year's championship. And uh, Paddy Feehan taking uh, a leaf from Kerry book in the first half, going directly at a player, trying to sidestep and winning the free. Well, what a difference a few months have made for Tip. Three of their monster final heroes from last November, not even in the country at the moment. Alan Campbell, Liam Casey, and of course, Colin O'Reardon, who's back in Australia with the Sydney Swans again. They've also lost uh, Philip Austin to retirement. But they do have Connor Sweeney, and he's just knocked over his second point to go with his goal from a penalty. And he is again, as he so often does, doing most of the heavy lifting in terms of scores on the board. Once again, the man climbing highest there was uh, tip midfielder Connell Kennedy, but he was climbing on his opponent. Kerry get the free. Michal Burns pops it off to Brian Obegliak. Drives into the D, feeds Paddy Clifford, so strong, upper body, shovels it in towards goal. But Evan Comerford, who's a, a big unit, he's six foot five, the tip goalkeeper, got up above all comers. Tip, lose the ball on the way out, though. Back to Clifford. Takes aim, let's fly, and right over the black spot. Business as usual. Well, to be fair to Tipperary, that's probably one of the first uh, unforced errors. Goalie did well, but just uh, didn't have enough purchase on the, on the kick out or the, the kick pass and uh, carry the best team along with Dublin to uh, punish those unforced errors in, in, the, uh, in their forward line. So 1-1 one, one then for David Clifford, the Kerry captain on the field tonight. And the lead now out to eight points. That's the scene Evan Comerford is currently surveying. His options fairly narrow by the looks of things. So he goes long. David Moran is moving into position. Touches it down nicely to Paddy Clifford. The most experienced Kerry man on the field, David Moran there. Using that uh, experience to good effect. Clifford beaten away by O'Connell. Quinlevin plays a 1-2. And now O'Connell Kennedy. Tip haven't too many players ahead of the ball, but one of them is Bill Maher, and that just took a wicked bounce, and it ran away from him. He's got through an awful lot of hard work already, and it, remember, he's missed so much football. This is first game of the year. Yeah, the the idea was very good for Colin Kennedy. Just execution, just a little bit over hit, but uh, he uh, made the right decision. But uh, on that previous kick out there, David Moran just knocking the ball down. I think what Kerry did in the last kick out is they had four in the full forward line. They were forcing Tipperary to go long. They think they have an advantage on a long kick out. Tom O'Sullivan taken by Sean O'Shea. That was well played by Robbie Kiley. He just timed that tackle right to the split second to knock it away from O'Shea. 
Tip trying everything they know now to get going and to stay in this game. They've lost four of their last five matches between league and championship. And they're just trying to get into some sort of a rhythm. Lonergan. This is Colomo Shocknessy. Jack Kennedy winds up. And that's gone across the face of goal for a, a poor wide, really. Tipperary's fourth. The sort of wide that just chips away at a team's confidence. And Kerry are already gone with the quick kick out. Paddy Clifford drills it in over the top. Sean O'Shea knew what was coming and it started his run. Brian Fox across to engage him. Kerry now playing the game at their pace. Stephen O'Brien. David Moran is on the move. Instead, he uses O'Connor. Paddy Clifford. And Mike Breen will pick out Tom O'Sullivan, who once again pops up on the right wing in space. Clifford continues the run, but the pass was just asking too much of him. And here's Connor Bow from Moyne Temple Tui to intercept. And Brian Fox will give it to the substitute, Paddy Feehan. Connell Kennedy. Robbie Kiley. Tom O'Sullivan was waiting for him when he turned there. Free to tip. Out to Brian Fox. Sweeper in the first half, but released to different duties since half time. Quinlevin. Referee is going to bring it back. I think Michael Quinlevin would have preferred the advantage. Yeah, I think so on that occasion. But Connor Sweeney is playing very, very deep, playing just in front of the small parallelogram and marked uh, tightly by Jason Foley and the reason why Tip aren't able to kick the ball in to him is that when, when Tip do attack Kerry are just dropping back a sweeper maybe 10-15 metres in front of him I think Tip need to push somebody up on that sweeper just to give an option for the ball to, to Sweeney if it's broke if it breaks he has somebody else you know running towards the goal right now if it breaks it's going to be swept up by a Kerry player under no pressure so a free for Tip and Jack Kennedy, one of the three brothers in the Tip squad. And hit that right on the sweet spot. And that is the cue for Kerry to make a change. Paul Murphy, their captain this season, is coming in. The defender from Rathmore will replace Mike Breen. That's a very much a straight swap. A wing back for a wing back. And the one-time All-Star and All-Ireland winner slots into his usual position. Shane Ryan, poor kick out. Kicked it right into the lap of Connor Bow, and he returns it from where it came. Yeah, he was trying to drill it out to uh, David Moran, but just under hit it a little bit. Not sure if the uh, the kick was meant to, to uh, was meant for a, a goal or, or a point, but uh, in the end it just dropped short. But I think Jim was talking about uh, Tip maybe pushing some more players forward. And you know, when you're seven points behind, You've got to either make the decision, OK, we're going to try and get a lot, get a few scores on the board and leave ourselves a little bit more open. Yeah, Kerry can do damage, but you've got to try and win the game and not, uh, and not just contain the opposition. Neat exchange of hand passes. Kerry are in. Jeremy O'Connor, O'Brien, great save by Comerford. Well, he was in the right place. O'Brien put the head down and hit it with everything he had. And Comerford pushes it away for a 45. If that goes in, you'd imagine there's no way back. Yeah, look, super save, super save. He stood up, got his hands up quickly. But what I liked as well about Kerry is that Jeremy O'Connor wasn't trying to go on to his left foot. That lovely turn, pass around the back to, uh, to Stephen O'Brien. Again, the unselfish play, not looking for the score himself, always looking to pass to the player in a better position. Well, he's one of the... All-Ireland winners from 2014, still in the squad, Stephen O'Brien. Popped up nicely there on the end of that move. And the first 45 of the evening falls to Sean O'Shea. All-Star in 2019 and playing like one at the moment. Conditions are good, slight breeze blowing into his face. 
And Sean O'Shea is in that sort of a mood. Eight points now and counting for the Kerry number 11. So O'Shea in again organising the press as Evan Comerford feels the squeeze and Kerry push right in. Tries to go over it, looking for Lonergan. Break works out nicely for Gavin White. Paul Ganey. No shortage of options, but Ganey just delayed for a split second and he's been pinged for overcarrying. Yeah, I thought he was a bit harsh there. I thought he got it onto his left foot for the solo within kind of the four steps, but um, it was good pressure by uh, Tip. But again, uh, Kerry forcing Tip to kick long and uh, winning the Tipperary kick out. Peter Keane getting ready to run his bench again. Tommy Welsh will be coming in now any moment. As you can see, uh, Killian Spillane is also stripped and ready. So a double substitution on the way as Peter Keane and Kerry just try to ramp up the pressure and try something a little different in their forward line. Tommy Welch, six foot six, the 2008 All-Star, and we're pretty sure he will head straight into the edge of the square. And there you can see Paul Ganey and Michal Burns, the players who are being replaced. Well, the arrival of Tommy Welch in particular, Paul, will give Tipperary a whole different sort of problem to deal with. Yeah, he's a powerful man. He leads the line well. He makes really good hard runs from the full forward line and he has such good hands that any time he does get the ball, he wins the ball with the hands kind of stretched right out in front, which make it very difficult for a defender to knock the ball away from behind. So he, he's extending the hand when he's, uh, when he's catching the ball. So 1-3 for Conor Sweeney, 1-6 for Tip. They stay within striking distance, but just about. We're 11 minutes into the second half, and the Munster champions still with some catching up to do. Paul Murphy using his pace to get out in front and drive it into Tommy Welch. Decoy runs being made left and right. Sean O'Shea takes over. Jim O'Connor, Welch on the loop. And that's very high and untidy from Kevin Fahey. And David Power knows it. Fahey just overcommitted, but he is a very hard man to stop, Tommy Welch. Yeah, but he was, you know, he, he was going around the around the corner and uh, not in any really dangerous position. So a bit of a loose, uh, a loose foul by Kevin Fahey, and you know, definite yellow card, high tackle around the neck. They've got to be punished with the yellow. So Kevin Fahey, one of those All Ireland minor winners from 10 years ago, is in the book. David Clifford had plenty of time there to compose himself and he just curls it in nicely inside that post brings his personal tally to a goal and two and tops up the Kerry advantage in the process it's all very business like at the moment from Kerry Comerford this time elects to go right down the middle just over the hands of the outstretched Jack Kennedy sitting in was Obegliak. Paul Murphy. Mad for action after coming in off the bench to Stephen O'Brien. Here's Killian Spillane, first touch. Can kick off either side. Everybody backed off and Spillane helps himself to his first point. Well, he's, he's a terrific, he's a finisher. And uh, when the game opens up, he gets on the ball quite a bit as he did against Clare the last day. I think he got maybe three points when he came on as a sub. but. But Kerry absolute killing Tipperary on the long kickouts. Now, there are two, three Kerry players in the drop zone each time. They're just outnumbering them when the ball hits the ground. And that's the first one they've won in the last uh, 10 minutes on a long kickout. Robbie Kiley looking for options, looking for runners. Everybody seems to be covered. He'll pop it down the line and hope that Quinlevin can make something of it, but Gavin Crowley had too much pace there. He had the wheels on Quinlevin. Well, he's bedding in nicely at six, and he's just been caught there by Quinlevin, who shows his frustration. I think uh, he wasn't overly happy about the pass. He certainly wasn't 
too pleased about losing out in the foot race to Crowley. And he just had a little bite. And by the looks of his face here, he doesn't like what Niall Cullen is telling him. It's a straight red. And that striking action from Niall Cullen would lead us to believe he felt it was clear cut, it was a strike, and tipper down to 14 men. Yeah, it looked like to me. Let's have a look at it here again now and uh, see what happens here. Oh, I don't think it was a fist. I think he may be just at, at forearm. If we look at it closely here, uh, it's hard to know from there. Was it a forearm? Was it a fist? Referee deemed it to be a fist. Hard to be definitive even looking at it on the replay. Well, yeah, certainly he pushed him away. Does it? Yeah, looks from that angle more like a fist. He has the fist closed. If it is a fist, yeah, it's a, it's a red card, it's frustration. So Michael Quinlevin's evening ends early after some 49 minutes and tips. Job of work has just got a whole lot bigger. They're down to 14 men now for the rest of this game. Gavin Crowley did pick up a yellow for the initial push. David Clifford trying to curl it in again. Three wides for Kerry, but nine points down and a man down with 20 minutes to go now. David Power and his team really are up against it. Well, absolutely, and uh, you know they, they may have to go short a little bit now again, but Kerry, four players in the full forward line, just forcing them as, to go long, but there are pockets of space that they can play into, so they've just got to work it up because they're, they're going to be playing with... Uh, they're only going to be playing with one player in the f in, inside the, their 45 now, with Michael Quinlevin gone. Tip getting ready to bring in Stephen O'Brien, man who played at midfield in their Munster final win last November. And it really is now a case of all hands to the pump. Kerry have the Munster champions right where they want them. Cody Clifford penalised there for pushing the ball carrier O'Shaughnessy as Shane O'Connell from Golden Kilfeekel gets on the ball, a little goose step to try and lose Clifford. Normally that would be happening the other way around, but uh, O'Connell wanted to take on Clifford, and Tip have won a free. He's certainly not short on confidence, the Tip cornerback, as here comes the change. Yeah, I think that's, that's, a good that's a good change, I think. Stephen O'Brien, good in the air, athletic. Uh, they certainly need some extra energy at this stage. Uh, players who have the capacity to go hard for for the last uh, tw 20 minutes uh, with a man down is going to be very, very difficult. So Connor Bow, the monster under-20 hurler of the year back in 2019, he's been replaced as Colm O'Shaughnessy drives into the Kerry half. Now Kevin Fahey. Kerry closed down most of the avenues of attack. That pass is loose and careless. Stephen O'Brien is onto it. And now Kerry will play on the break. O'Brien, just look where Jason Foley is, the fullback, to Pawdy Clifford. They're hunting a goal, all right. Clifford to Sean O'Shea, sells the dummy. Great block. Out for a 45 off the hands of Brian Fox who chased all the way back to make the tackle. Oh, that's a brilliant play by Brian Fox. Just work rate, never say die. He knew he was, Sean O'Shea was going to turn on and to his right foot and uh, brilliant block. Well, he really is a great bit of stuff, Brian Fox, as Tipperary's evening has just gone from bad to worse. Jason Lonergan, black card. Now, we'll have to take another look to see exactly what happened there, but uh, let's see. Yeah, out of the corner of my eye, maybe I saw a, a, a deliberate block. Well, that can't that can't be it anyway, because he shouldered him. Well, maybe he shouldered him in, in the act of passing the ball, but that's not a black card offence. Well, we're just waiting on word to find out exactly what happened, but we are hearing it was in during the build-up to that uh, Kerry chance out on the sideline for a tackle that uh, Jason Lonergan put in. It was a late tackle, obviously. Uh, Deliberate block. I the linesman, I think, may have brought the referee's yeah. attention to it, but in either, in either way, tipper down to 13 men. Here it is. Yeah. Uh, 
that's a late tackle as far as I'm concerned. It's not a kind of a body collision, you know, where you're stopping a player going back. But, uh, <laughs> again, again, these are harsh decisions. Was he able to stop? His momentum was carrying him through. Um, I think he might have uh, might have let that one go, but... So we've hit the water break. Kerry nine points up. Let's uh, hear what Jim McGuinness and Kieran Donaghy have made of the third quarter. Yeah, look, I suppose very tough on Tipperary. Bit of a harsh black card. Um, unfortunately for Mikey Quinlivan, I think the red was was deserved. But um, Tommy Walsh coming in now straight away, winning winning possession inside his three or four wins, and uh, Killian Spillane. So Kerry with a bit of a different look inside now, Dave, with uh, or Mike with um, Tommy Killian and and David Clifford inside. So be interesting to see how they work with. But uh, Tipperary will have to look like to go short with, when they went short with the last kick out Jim and they got, they got him up the pitch a bit, 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 bit better yeah no listen uh, David Power I'll tell you what he's got, his, he's got a, a speech in his hands there trying to motivate the guys or keep them on task because um, going down to 13 against uh, a forward line like this is um, well, it's, it's, it's some task um, I thought it was very very harsh I have to say I agree with Kieran. like I thought the first one was uh, a send off but the second one was very very harsh and now we're in a situation where 53 minutes on the clock you know down to 13 men for 10 minutes it's it's a tough spot to be in and um and on the carry side of things again agree with kieran like uh, i think tommy Walsh looked very sharp got out in front won the ball first time going off killian's plan gets on it kicks a good score and you know those two players probably would be in every other team in the country really wouldn't they um you know with the exception of dublin you could say or maybe not you know they're they're quality 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 players and um creates this different dynamic up front that um that probably peter Keane's looking to road test because you don't know what's coming down the track yeah obviously and tommy tommy's out in this press as well which is also a factor he's able to compete in the middle of the field in these kickouts mike thanks lads jack barry is coming in just to add to Tipperary's woes, and there's no doubt now the defending champions will have to dig in and dig deep if they're to uh, keep Kerry honest down the home straight. And it's David Clifford who's been taken out for Kerry, by the way. He's going to be wrapped in cotton wool ahead of the Munster final. Did uh, limp out of the quarter final win over Clare, but showed no ill effects of that injury tonight. Certainly, he leaves the field having uh, contributed 1-2 to the Kerry cause. Tipperary's last win over Kerry in the championship was the Munster semi-final of 1928. And right now, it looks very much like that is going to continue for at least another year. That uh, run stretching 93 years. They were rank outsiders coming into this game, given their form and their form lines. And as Jim mentioned, Tipperary will have to play with 13 men for the next nine minutes or so, and 14 for the remainder of the game. And Kerry, with two extra men on the field, you'd imagine, will make that count. They go long here. Tommy Welch is in after it. He flicks it, and Comerford needed a second bite, but manages to get it away. Yeah, again, it was Paddy Clifford, a beautiful hanging ball, just beat the, the full back. Tommy Walsh just uh, reaching for an almost perfection. It was a beautiful pass here, just a perfect pass outside of the boot, hanging in the air, and uh, Tommy just uh, getting his left hand to it. Evan Comerford in the right position, did well. But uh, that, that good quality left-footed kick pass from uh, Paddy Clifford offers them just another option. Kerry trying to road test plan B, as it were, there, going long to Tommy Welch, who remains parked in at full forward, where he's being marked by Jimmy Feehan. Meanwhile, out around the middle, Bill Maher and company are trying to figure out their next move. Bill Maher again, man who won All-Ireland Minor hurling and football medals back in the day. Ball touched on the floor by Jack Kennedy. 14 minutes to go. And Jason Lonergan trying to stay warm and stay ready ahead of his return to the fray. No Tipperary score now for 10 minutes. This is Jeremy O'Connor sauntering forward to Tom O'Sullivan. Sean O'Shea. 
Perry going to try their luck down the left-hand side. Gavin White inside to Murphy. Three Kerry subs combined, and the ball ends up back in the hands of Tom O'Sullivan. David Morn, who's had a, a nice leisurely evening by and large. Paddy Clifford, now they're in. O'Connor, who started the move, can he finish it? Blazes it high and wide. It's only Kerry's fifth miss, and it really should have hit the target. Yeah, Moran to Paddy Clifford again. Paddy Clifford to a beautiful pass inside. You know, just snatched it a little bit, cut across it. Wasn't as composed maybe as he'd, uh, as he'd like to be. Had a little bit more time maybe than he thought. But it's rare you see Kerry miss the target from, uh, from that position. But they opened up uh, Tipperary again. And again, we have to recognise Tipperary still down to 13 men. Lots of space in the field for Kerry to exploit. 10 minutes and counting since Kerry's last score now as well. That may be a slight cause for concern for Peter Keane. Tip heading towards the 12 minute mark as Robbie Kiley tries to break the stalemate. Back to Connor Sweeney. Connor Sweeney shoots and scores. A goal and four for the tip captain. And it ends that run of almost 13 minutes without a flag. Well, he's worked awful hard inside in the full forward line and he's waited patiently for passes or balls to come in and uh, hasn't got a direct ball in the game, but uh, he's still working hard, as you expect from the captain. Led by example last year. And uh, there was a little bit of a screen, I think, by, uh, by Kylie as well to uh, give him the opportunity, by Robbie Kylie, give him the opportunity. I think, is that the first score? First score from play from a, a Tipperary forward. So Connor Sweeney it is who breaks that scoring duck as it were, and the margin now stands at eight points. Here in the evening sunshine in Thurless, the shadowing shadow starting to lengthen as Paddy Clifford cuts through, and Paddy Clifford gets what he came for. Well, he's worked so hard for that first point of the evening, and I think his younger brother approved. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Look, he's had another dynamic game. He's got on the ball so often, and, uh, you know, he's he's the ultimate team player because he's always looking for the, the pass. He mightn't get as, he won't get as many scores as as his brother, David, who's a really special talent, but I tell you, he's made a big mark in the in the two games he's played in the championship so far. Huge addition to this Curry, uh, Curry team. Robbie Kiley sporting the scars of battle. He needs some work. Kerry not quite hitting the numbers just yet. They did against Clare, but there's still quite a bit of time. Seven different scorers so far. Paddy Clifford now up to a staggering 28 possessions with at least 10 minutes to go. And as some thoughts already start to turn towards the Munster final, Paul, Paddy Clifford's role and how to curb it, you'd imagine, will have to be a significant part of the Cork game plan. Well, the rotational policy of the, of, uh, the Kerry management uh, uh, up on the forward line just really works. When you have a lot of pace and you have players who have the ability to perform those kind of skills under pressure, um, it's very difficult to, to mark against that. And if you have a dominant midfield, then it's impossible to mark against that. And I think today what we've seen is, you know, the, the game was played very much in Tipperary's half of the field. Kerry were largely dominant on the long kickouts, even though Tip midfield did well and you know caused some problems running through in the first half. But uh, his role, um, it's it's a new role, and uh, he drifts out. He's a bit like a, a, a playmaker, and he allows his brother to maybe drop out a little bit when Sean O'Shea goes in, and he can ping those passes inside. So it's um, it's a big asset to have, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how other teams will cope with that as the, the championship progresses. Tip still operating with 13 men. They've just made a, a double substitution, but one of them is a, a temporary replacement. Jack Harney from Moyle Rovers is on to make his championship debut as a, a blood sub for Robbie Kiley, while his clubmate Shane Foley also in for his first taste of championship action. As David Power takes a look at the talent available to him on the conveyor belt. This uh, another big week for Tip Football. Either way, they have a monster under-20 semi-final 
next week against Waterford. In fact, one of those players, Sean O'Connor, is on the bench tonight for tip. But right now, Kerry just keeping the home side at arm's length. And Peter Keane deciding it's time to take a look at Tyg Morley. Started the season as the team's first choice full back and right now slotting in to replace Gavin White, I think. In fact, no, there was that mixed signals. It's Gavin Crowley who's been taken out of the Kerry defence. And Tyg Morley, who's coming back from injury, gets his chance to impress. Yeah, another very good performance from Gavin Crowley. I think collectively the Kerry defence has done well. You know, the concession of the, the penalty was really the only the only negative for them. Uh, you know, eight scores, concession, eight scores in 62 minutes. Football, they conceded 111 against uh, Clare. Average concession was 13 scores a game before that in the league. So that's impressive in the, in the modern game where scoring rates have gone up. Yeah. Well, Kerry led by eight points at half time. Now nine up. That's a, a late hit by Jack Barry on the Tipperary ball carrier, Bill Maher. He really has carried the fight right from the start, Bill Maher. And a yellow for Jack Barry. So Jack Kennedy has decided to leave this on the floor again. Just inside the 45. It's going to drop short. In fact, David Moore lets it run through. And now Jason Lonergan returns after his stint in the sin bin. Tip are back up to 14 again. But it really does uh, feel academic at this stage. Kerry in complete control and they have their ticket booked to the Munster final. Trying now to apply the glass here and finish what they've started as Brino Begliak tries to make a break down the left-hand side. Jack Barry takes the hit from Jack Kennedy and powers on. Quick transfer from Tommy Welch to Killian Spillane looking to lose a defender or two. Welsh shovels it out the field a little further and Kerry will try a different route. Sean O'Shea, David Moore makes the dummy run. O'Shea has support from Tom O'Sullivan. Cody Clifford goes right by the shoulder of Lonergan. Lovely disguise pass to Tyg Morley. Here's Tom O'Sullivan. The opening closed as quickly as it had appeared. Back to Killian Spillane. And Kerry get their point. Two for Spillane, who's made a big impact off the bench. Yeah, I know it's five minutes to go, and, and uh, Tipperary are out on their feet, and, and, and they're a man down. But that was just a sensational piece of football. And what I loved about it was there was about five different left-handed hand passes that hit the target from right-footed players. And it just shows, again, the, the array of skills that they have. You know, you've got to be able to pass with your left and right. You've got to be able to kick with your left and right accurately at this level. And Kerry showed that in that passage of play, how accurate and how skillful they are. And the decision-making was just outstanding. Brian Fox is in the wars. He'll be 33 next weekend. He's a former Tipperary captain, and he really couldn't have done much more here in terms of individual effort. And it was that challenge a moment ago that's landed him in, in trouble. Coleman Kennedy is getting ready to come in if he's needed. If he does, it means the uh, three Kennedy brothers would be on the field. So the game eventually restarts. Four minutes of normal time to play. Comerford kick into the contest. And that last touched a Kerry hand. Possession to Tipperary. Shane Foley. Chance for him to show what he can do. 
Kylie gives it to Jack Kennedy. And the man in space is the man who's come back in from the sin bin, Jason Lonergan. Shane O'Connell. Paddy Feehan. Spilled by Stephen O'Brien, retained by Tipperary. Shane Foley again. Tip having to take the long way round here as Kerry tried to run them down a cul-de-sac. And they'll have to start from scratch by the looks of things. Jimmy Feehan. The fullback has seen enough and gets forward to Bill Maher, who's still going. Tom O'Sullivan after him. Bill Maher looking to knock it in around the danger area. O'Connell and David Moore in there to intercept. Well, all of that industry and effort from Tipperary ends empty-handed. No score for them now for 10 minutes. Jack Barry carrying it clear. The man from the Nagale Club in Tralee just ran out of road there. Good work by Jack Kennedy. This is Stephen O'Brien. One of those monster final heroes from last November. Fouled and a free to tip, and they will try to get going again. Double scores in the monster semi-final. Clock running down. And Tipperary now very much playing for pride as Fahey tries to knock it in, but he forced that shot. And that's well wide from the centre back. And that's the cue for Coleman Kennedy to come in. You have to hand it to Tipperary, Mike. You know, they've never dropped the heads. Their work rate has been really high. You know, even with been down to 13 men, now down to 14 men uh, since the black car came back on. Um, and uh, they've held Kerry for the last um, 10 minutes to uh, only a couple of scores. So, you know, they're not giving away their title easily. They lost four very influential players who were on the team last year that won the, uh, the historic Munster final. And, and they don't have the strength and depth that Kerry have, and, and it's very difficult to replace those players. So they, they've, you know, they've got to, they've got to get a lot of credit for the way they've, uh, they've hung on in this game and fought right to the bitter end. So Coleman Kennedy, the man who will forever be known as the teenager who scored the winning goal in the 2011 All Ireland Minor Final, he's in for the last few minutes as Kerry tried to apply the signature scorer to that's David Moran and there's his first made his championship debut 13 years ago against Cork David Moran and at this stage of the evening Paul time for you to tell us who's your selection for man of the match well I think Tom O'Sullivan and Kerry defense collectively were very good Tom O'Sullivan very good in the first half but again he, he you know he wasn't marking a player got on the ball quite a bit David Moran started to control the game kind of halfway through the, the second half but I think when the game was competitive and in the melting pot and when Kerry were struggling maybe to open up Tipperary I think Paddy Clifford just his his movement his running his showing for the ball uh, finding little pockets of space linking the play you know, I thought he was fantastic and uh, some of his kick passing as well out of this world. And he's ended up, I think, with 30 possessions and he's worked incredibly hard right to the end and he always makes good decisions. So I think, and, 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 and uh, against Clare, he was magnificent also. So I think he's a deserving man of the match today. So Paddy Clifford from Fossa on just his second championship start is Paul Early's selection for our air man of the match. 30 possessions against Clare. 30 already this evening and still four and a half minutes to play well Kerry have shot nine points or uh, seven points rather in this second half tip just the four it's been a, a low scoring slow burner of a second half really and for months the moment Michael Quinlevin was sent off and Tip went down to 14 men. It really did uh, bring an end to the Tipperary challenge in so many ways. And now another bit of housekeeping for Niall Cullen. It's a black card for Tyg Morley. So Kerry will finish the game with 14 men as well. well. Well, he's having a tough time. He came on against Roscommon in the league and within a minute he had got a, a red card and he missed the uh, subsequent game against uh, Tyrone, the last league game. And uh, he wasn't started the last day. He's come on today and 
you know, within a couple of minutes, he's got a black card. So, you know, is there, is there a discipline issue? Is there, you know, is he too, too eager uh, when he comes on to make an impression? Or just having a bad run of luck? Well, plenty for Tyg Morley to mull over. He's just having a quick word with uh, the fourth official at the moment, I think trying to figure out exactly what happened there as Jack Kennedy drills that free beautifully over the bar. Three points for the Tipperary midfielder. Gap stands at 10 points. And here's why Tyg Morley was shown a black card. That challenge just there on Brian Fox deemed to be a deliberate pull-down. Well, I think it, 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 either a deliberate pull-down or a deliberate kind of body collide because he's, he stopped Brian Fox making a run into space. So I think it might have been the latter, you know. So, you know, the deliberate kind of body collide, you know, preventing the, the, the player from uh, making a run to receive a pass. So I do think it, it, it was a correct decision. It is a black card decision. Tommy Welch. Coming on the loop, looking for a piece of the action. Kept in play by O'Brien into the danger zone. Falls to the man of the match, Paddy Clifford. And he just couldn't resist the temptation to touch it on the ground right in front of Niall Cullen. Free to tip and a chance for them to perhaps come up with something. Shane Foley. A stop brought to his gallop by Paul Murphy. Coleman Kennedy takes on the shot, and that is a, a poor effort. Sliced off the outside of his boot. Six wides for tip. They really have lacked any sort of a, a cutting edge all evening. And yeah. with Quinlevin back in the dugout, they really are short of staff up front. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, you know, one, one point from play from the forwards tells the story. Not, maybe not ambitious enough. Obviously, went out to protect the goal, and they did that for quite a while. And, you know, they've only conceded one goal against Kerry in, in the match. Uh, and uh, they, they may feel, OK, the double sweeper is justified. But when you're, you know, drawing or bringing players back like that, you're going to suffer up front. But just going back to the black card again, you know, the, 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 the Tyg Morley one. I suppose the, the, the correct interpretation of the referee was, was that Tyg Morley took the player out of a movement of play. Took, I think it was Brian Fox, out of a movement of play, and uh, he certainly did. So it is one of the black, five black card rules, and the referee made a correct decision on that occasion. Well, regardless of what happened here, this was another momentous day for Tipperary. For the first time in 85 years, a tip football team ran out for a monster championship game as defending champions. But it just uh, didn't happen for them this evening. They've been second best since the second quarter, really. And once Kerry scored that goal from David Clifford, they never looked back. And full value for their 10-point lead. Paul Murphy, their captain, will be hoping to drive on and lift a, a trophy or two before the summer's out. Gives it to Tommy Welch. And it was Killian Spillane that finished. And there goes the final whistle. Well, back in 1936, Tip were dethroned as Munster champions by Kerry. And history has just repeated itself this evening here at Semple Stadium. David Power and his team bow out of the Munster Championship at the first hurdle. Their rare and wonderful provincial final win last November. Well, that can never be taken away from them, but their 2021 season really never got going. And it's Peter Keane and Kerry who march on to a Munster final meeting with Cork in two weeks' time. And it will be, Paul, just like old times. Just like all times, and uh, Kerry, the form team in the country at the moment. Uh, brilliant movement up front. Uh, very efficient, normally in front of goal, maybe a little bit less efficient today. 31 shots, 20 scores, uh, but uh, they certainly are, are on fire, and uh, it's going to be a cracking monster final, and Cork will, uh, will uh, have to perform to their very, very best to keep with this uh, Kerry team. But credit to Tipperary as well, as I said, they were 
absolutely excellent Munster champions last year. It was a historic day, historic achievement for them in the year that it was, and uh, they played their role of champions very well today. So it's finished here at Semple Stadium. Kerry 119, Tipperary 1 8. Thanks, Mike and Paul, for that. Just to let you know, next weekend we are live with a hurling and football doubleheader. A round one qualifier games to be confirmed after the draw on Monday morning. And then we are in, in for the Ulster semi final between Arma and Mon. And throw in there will be at 4 p.m. And of course, we're back with Inside the Game next Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. with Brian looking back and ahead to the weekend's actions. But it is the full-time score here. Tipperary, a goal and eight points. Kerry, one goal and 19 points. Which means, of course, that Kerry are through to yet another Munster final. Yeah, well, an impressive display by Kerry there. They're true to the Munster final. Um, thoughts of it, just let's talk about Kerry. I want to talk about Tipperary as well, Jim. But just maybe overall, just in terms of Kerry's performance tonight. Impressed? Improvements where? What did you think? Very, very impressed. Um, I said to you at the top of the show, they look like a team yeah, with the bit between the teeth, and that's exactly what we've seen tonight from, from the very start of the game. Um, the full-backs, the half-backs, middle of the park, both of them dominating both kick-outs. Um, the forward plays brilliant, killing Splan off the bench, three points. Um, they, they, look, they look very, very close to being ready to win in All-Ireland, and I would imagine there's people in the capital that are getting a wee bit nervous uh, looking at that because um, they're definitely the real deal. Uh, you still have to go and win it, and you still have to, you know, step over the line and cross those hurdles. But certainly, in terms of their preparation and where they need to be, and uh, moving towards uh, a monster final, um, they're they're one of the top top teams in the country. A word on Tipperary, Kieran, because it was a challenging and difficult day for them, wasn't it? It was, but you know what, Grania, they they kept their head. They were down to 13 men. They only conceded a point in that in that period of the game. Um, they battled right to the very end. There was no quitting them. You know, 11 points against that Kerry team with the situation they were in, it could have been a lot, lot worse. Um, they can be very proud of the of, of, of the performance. I'm glad to see a lot of the Tipperary fans uh, cheering them off the pitch there because this team deserves it. They didn't get it after their Munster Championship win last year. Um, so credit goes to them for not capitulating, not folding when it may have been easy to do so. Everything was going against them, carrying their pump. Uh, down to 14 men, then a harsh enough black card, and uh, yeah. Okay, let's look at this. These incidents here, Jim. I mean, as Kieran mentioned, there the red card and then the black card for Tipperary. Go t go through that for us. Yeah, this is the red card. And listen, uh, Peter Canavan said uh, earlier that you know he felt that I was very harsh in terms of the red card and Tyrone. And maybe I was because it was a soft one, but. He lifted his hand, and if you lift your hand, you're putting yourself in the fire line. That's exactly what happens here. You lift your hand, the, the, the referee's very, very close, and the referee seemed very, very sure. We weren't sure, um, but he was sure, and, uh, and he's paid the ultimate price, and it left the game in a, in a, a very, very difficult situation. This, one is, this one's a nothing for me. Uh, it's just, you know, what do you say about that? You know, it's a... It's a are coming together more than anything else, you know. And then this is Tyke Morley just at, towards the end of the second half. Yeah, um, again, you know, it's one of those ones that's that's borderline, but he probably should know better than anybody on the back mm. on the back of the last situation. And a lot of those, the, the three of those situations, in many respects, it comes down to emotional control. You know, just because it's championship football and just because the stakes are high and just because you want it so, so badly doesn't mean you left your hand. You know, it doesn't mean that you cross that line because once you go there, then it's a it's a different ball game. And that referees are trained and programmed for these things, and you're making it easy for them. Kieran, just let's look at some of the of the Kerry scores then towards the end of that latter half. Talk us through the the bench and some of your friends of, as well as getting on the scoring sheet. Yeah, look, I think Paddy Clifford was 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 outstanding, and you know pushed by David Moore from man of the match but you know Paddy was was absolutely outstanding in the way he went about this uh, um, about some of his scores and and Killian likewise is a sharp shooter he wants to get on the of everything he's so sharp at getting it down onto his boot he's very hard to block um, and they just saw it out with comfort and and good play good quick hands here keeping it out of contact uh, and there's Dave off balance like you know 33 years of age made his debut 13 years ago and there he is in the 69th minute bombing up the pitch kicking a point for Kerry so you know, again, credit goes to the backroom team and in the shape they have Kerry in physically, they look very strong. 
I'd be slightly worried that we didn't see them tested on the kickouts today. You know, th there was a few areas that we may be looking that, that look cocked down the road. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely come to test them. But carry your motor in along nicely. They're not setting the world alight, but they're just tipping away and they're doing the job. And that's what Peter Keane would be happy about. So you see the carry points we've just shown there. Uh, it looks as if they're almost overplaying it in the final third, that they're moving the ball so quickly. And I was saying to... Kieran before the game, the, the drill that they were doing before the game, all their scores there when they're under real pressure in the final third is reflective of that drill. And it was once or twice tonight where players actually had the opportunity to lift their head and kick it, but they're so programmed to move the ball first time every time that they know somebody's coming on the loop every time. So it's a very difficult thing to deal with because human nature is you look at the man, next thing it's not him, it's the next mm -hmm. guy coming, the one's going to get it, and that's where that's where it's hard to mark. Okay, well you've both have mentioned Paddy Clifford there, and he of course is the airman of the march. He's speaking with Shane Dawson. Paddy, congratulations. You are this evening's air man of the match, and unfortunately you have to present yourself with the award due to COVID. Paddy, congratulations. A big win for Kerry there. How do you assess that victory? Um, it was a tough grind. Um, we knew what it was going to be like. Tip obviously won the Munster final last year. Um, they obviously didn't perform too well in the league, but we knew they were going to be a different animal, and they clearly were. The goal settled us, to be fair. And we kind of pushed on from there, yeah. Yeah, there was a, a lot more, I suppose, a calmness about the performance from the goal. So, so was that the turning point for you guys? Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It was very cagey before that. Um, then just Gav made a great run. We kind of realised then maybe penetrating through the bodies was probably going to be the way to go. So it was a template for the rest of the game, probably, right, yeah. In terms of a tough grind, just how tough was the, the physicality of that one? Because there was a lot of big hits there from Tipperary defenders. Some might say a couple of late hits as well. But, you know, how tough a battle was that? Yeah, very tough. Um, tip are they're just they're strong. They're big. They're big men. They've been big men all around the pitch, and you feel it. You feel a, a bang off them. All right. Uh, in terms of your own performance, 34 possessions, the most in the Kerry team. Has Peter Keane afforded you a bit of a, a playmaker role? Because you're not going to be on the top of the, the the scoreboard, perhaps. But you know, you're really influencing the game. Um, yeah, I suppose that is my role. He. He wants me to do a bit of everything, to be fair, you know, just getting back, getting tackles in. That's my main aim, get tackles in. And yeah, try and influence the game whichever way I can, yeah, exactly. And in terms of influence the game then, does that, has that afforded or, or let Sean O'Shea push up closer to the square, a bit more of a free roll for Sean? Um, yeah, it has, to be fair. And he, cl the closer he is to goal, to, the better, obviously, because he's kicking just outrageous, to be fair. How much are you enjoying yourself, that dynamic, you know, yourself along, alongside David, of course, but Sean, Paul Ganey, Michal Burns in, in, in today as well? Uh, yeah, we're all enjoying it. There's a, there's a serious buzz in training and we're all enjoying the, the interaction between the forwards, backs, midfield. Yeah, we're enjoying it, to be fair. We just have to keep, keep it rolling now for Cork. Yeah, in terms of keeping it rolling, how much do you feel you've been tested in the championship so far and how much you need to lift the performance now for Cork? Um, yeah, we're going to have to lift, lift it up another notch, definitely. But um, these two games are going to give us uh, a good template to go on. But obviously, we're going to have to lift it another bit for Cork. Yeah, well, a good start, long road ahead. Very, yeah. very congratulations today, Paddy. You are the air man of the match. Right, cheers. So, Thanks. Well done, and a very worthy man of the match at that. I uh, just want to pick up on a couple of points the, the lads made up in the studio about the, the movement up front from the Kerry forward division and also the impact that their, their subs had. First of all, the, the movement, and Jim you know, speaks so well about how quickly the, they move it through the hands. Uh, just watch the movement of these three players in particular and how they're able to... Sean O'Shea, Potty Clifford and, and Damon O'Connor, the interaction between them, they're always moving, they're always heads up. And the one aspect maybe that let Kerry down today was that they weren't clinical enough. And Stephen will be disappointed. He had the option of playing it out, one, two, but definitely this man, uh, Michal, he goes for the shot himself. Michal uh, is letting him know after he's kicked it and the goalkeeper has saved it that you should have played it over. But um, it's one aspect maybe that they do need to brush up on uh, moving forward for the amount of chances they had. The second point is the impact of their subs. There's serious competition on this uh, Kerry team. And moving forward, we know how strong Dublin are in, in terms of strength and, and depth. And I think Kerry are now uh, offering something in that dimension as, as well. Paul Murphy came on for Mike Breen. I thought he very quickly he got his hands on a lot of the ball. And the one thing that he is very good at, here he is looking the ball over at the at the far corner. And again, he's a heads-up player and he's very quick uh, to get up front as well. And this score, uh, it's actually Killian uh, Splan is, is the score taker.
but watch the the sweeper is actually looking at, at, at David uh, Clifford and this is something that I highlighted before the movement the other carry players are uh, the movement off the ball is exceptional and that just creates that few yards of space that that Killian needs and he's tapped it over the bar the other man that the lads have uh, have, have mentioned is uh, up front Tommy Walsh and in this case Tommy's movement we're, we're going to look at him inside here this is him with a hand up but just watch the man on the ball um, Potty Clifford uh, as I said man of the match but as soon as he gets the ball the head's up and in this case he elects not to play it in the corner we see uh, Tommy Walsh is telling him Potty put it in behind the defender and again he put in a brilliant pass against Clare what a fantastic pass Tommy will be disappointed maybe that he didn't get a wee bit more on that but on another day that perfect pass would have, would have finished in the back of the net so Peter Keane will be a bit disappointed I think for, for the first 24 minutes of the second half they only scored four points for all their, their endeavour and for the amount of possession they had probably a poor enough return but the men that he has coming on there's competition there for, for places and without a doubt Kerry are heading in the right direction Yes, they are indeed heading in the right direction. And just a word on Potty Clifford, because this is only his second championship game. He's got man of the match, so he, he did really well in his interview there. But Kieran, just for you, do you remember getting your first man of the match award and what was that like and having to do the media and all that after? I, I do, yeah, I do. It was down in, uh, in Killarney against Langford and uh, my first day full forward. And yeah, I was outside and I think Jack said he didn't really want me doing too much media and he just walked past and I was surrounded by about 20 uh, people yapping away. So, uh, look, it, it, you know, he's definitely... I'm delighted for him because, you know, he's he's around and David's the, the big star, but this guy is 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 making Kerry tick at the moment and um, he's a huge addition to, to, to what Peter Keane is trying to do. He's, he's unselfish in the way he goes about things. Uh, he's very good. He talks about there his main thing that Peter wants me to do work rate mm -hmm. tackles but then you get that and then you've all the balance and the way he's able to dodge and, and dive past people um, and then he's got that wand of a left foot as well which 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 comes in handy so I'm, I'm really happy for him um, it, it, you know and look it's the, it, the first of many hopefully for him it's a good place in a way for Peter King to be at too like they've won comfortably on the scoreline but there's still lots to work with Jim before the Munster final yeah but uh, I go back to what I said earlier it's just a focus you know job done that's it over uh, review and that's it and then away they go again uh, they're in a good place there's no doubt about that tactically they were very good today as well they asked a serious amount of questions all the time for every single minute of that game they were asking questions they're in really really top nick um, physically um, you know psychologically they're hurt which is the biggest driver of all. They're absolutely hurt from last season. And so put all that into the mix and it's a very powerful cocktail and it's going to take a serious team to beat them. Now that said, there's serious teams coming down the line. You know, if they get out of Munster, they've got a Munster final, they play the winners from, from Ulster in the semi-final and possibly the dubs in the final. So it's not an easy path mm. and it'll be, it'll, they'll be worthy winners if they get there, but they're in very, very fine fettle. And Peter, that is a Munster final is going to be in Killarney. So what an incentive for them as well. Yeah, absolutely, and there's going to be a bit of payback from, from last year. But uh, just a word on, on Tipperary. I thought at half-time they were dead and buried. Um, they're, look, they're worthy monster champions. There is a bit of fight in them, and I think they showed that with a man down, two men down in the, in, in the second half. So David Power can be uh, rightly happy that his men didn't throw in the towel and fought hard. But look, it's um, Kerry and Cork now to look forward to, and again, the way Kerry's going, they're going to be hard to stop. They're going to be hard to stop. Before we finish up, very brief word just on the fixtures taking place tomorrow. We have Derry and Donegal up in Ulster and Mayo and Leitrim. Mayo, of course, had incidents of COVID during the week, but they are um, playing tomorrow against Leitrim. Derry and Donegal, Jim, how do you see that going? Potential banana skin for Donegal. Like, uh, Kerry, or Derry are going very well. Uh, Rory's got them moving really well. They're putting up big scores in the league. They won Division 3, and I know people will look at that in terms of the context of Donegal and their ambitions. Uh, but definitely, uh, they're, they're absolutely heading in the right direction. Donegal will need to be focused themselves. They need to be at themselves uh, to win that. I do expect them to do that, but I think it'll be a very, very competitive game. And for you, Mayo and Leitrim tomorrow? Mayo are favourites? Yeah, look, it'll be... It'll be um, Leach from Division 4, they'll, they'll be knocked out. But just on, on the lads, I see Peter Keane, they're running the subs hard there, and I think they review that they're going to do during the week, four points in the second mm -hmm. half. It's something that he'll have, he'll have that stick to be whipping with, him with for the Munster final. So I expect a big performance from Kerry in that final. Okay, well, we're all looking forward to that as well. And as you can see, 
players, as you said, getting whipped into action there. But what a bench that he has to choose from. And they'll be back in action in two weeks' time. But it's almost time for us to finish up here. Before we go, just to look back on how things finished up in the championship today. In the All-Ireland Qualifiers preliminary round, Antrim and Leash met as Leash, who are through to the qualifying draw on Monday morning. In the Joe McDonough Cup, there are wins for Westmeath and for Meath. In the Munster Senior Football Championship semi-final, Cork are through to the Munster final after beating Limerick 116 to 11 points. And in Tipperary, then 1-8, Kerry 1-19, a win for Kerry here today. And up in Ulster, our earlier game, it's Tyrone who marched through to that Ulster semi-final, beating Cavan by a goal in 18 points to 13 points. Tomorrow, Mayo and Leitrim meet in the semi-final of the Connacht Football Championship. Throw in as a 2 p.m. with Donegal and Derry looking for a spot in the Ulster semi-final. 4 p.m. sees that game get underway. And next Saturday, we are back with a hurling and football doubleheader. A round one qualifier game to be confirmed after the draw on Monday morning. And following that, neighbours Arma and Monaghan meet in the Ulster football semi-final. Throw in is at 4 p.m. Next Wednesday again sees us back with another episode of Inside the Game on Sky Sports Arena as we look back to this weekend's actions and ahead, of course, to what's coming up. But Shanae, my thanks to Jim, Kieran, and Peter for their company today. Until next weekend, from all of us here, Slan and take care.